Hey dudes and dudettes, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Now in today's video tutorial, I'm going to be reacting to and trying out for myself some of Kathy Zilski's favorite card making life hacks. I love sharing these type of life hack videos with you guys because it shares so many different tips in one video. And lately lots of other creators like Kathy have been creating amazing videos like this, sharing their tips, which is just so awesome. So Kathy gave me permission to watch her video today and react to and recreate some of them and share them with with you and of course if you want to check out Kathy's amazing videos I love her so much I'll leave a link down below to the two videos that I watch and also her channel so you guys can go over there and subscribe all right without further ado let's get into it all right so I grabbed my computer out and let's get to watching and reacting to some of her tips hey everyone Kathy Zilski here welcome back to my YouTube channel Today I am sharing five tips and tricks for card makers. Tip number one is to use your score buddy to help you line things up. So this little tool is fantastic for adding score lines for our card bases, but you can also use it to adhere and line things up perfectly on those card bases. For example, you got a card panel. You press your base right into the corner of the score buddy, and then you take your panel and repeat. Press it right into the top. Okay, I never thought about this. This is a genius tip. I always tell people start from the top corner because you can always chop off any excess on the other side if your card fits the whole card front. And this is an amazing tip to bud it up right in the corner of that tool to make sure that it's going to be lined up perfectly. Because I know sometimes you might mess things up and get like a tiny little sliver on each side, but this really ensures that it gets lined up every single time. So genius, Kathy. Genius. I use my score buddy for this all the time. It's a fantastic tip, and you could also do this with a misty or other stamp positioner. I gotta say, this tip is genius. I would have never thought of it on my own. So I'm going to take my top folding card base. I've added some tape runner adhesive, and you wanna make sure that whatever you're using, that you put the top corner in there, especially because then, you know, you can cut whatever hangs off, but it's more difficult to cut it off from the top. Then I'll take my background and lay it right in there, line it up right along that edge and you could even use this whole side too right to get it lined up and then it is literally perfectly lined up on the card and of course if there's any excess on the bottom you could chop that off but i just love how easy that was to line it up on your card base and make sure that it is totally and completely flush with the edge now i'm using a guillotine paper trimmer for this but you're going to line up your strip and place that furthest most letter to the right with the edge of the trimmer guard here on this guillotine trimmer and cut the other side and repeat. Line up the furthest most letter to the right side, get that paper guard lined up perfectly and cut. This is one of my favorite tips. This is my favorite trimmer to use, and that guillotine trimmer has those finger guides on it, which is absolutely amazing. So I always use that plastic guide to line things up. I've seen some people struggling using that trimmer, so I wanted to share this too, but Kathy, this tip is phenomenal. I use it in my everyday crafting every single time I need to cut something on that trimmer. All right, so for this one, I'm going to take the happy birthday sentiment from my gnome party stamp set and stamp it down, and I'm gonna show you another tip, another reason why I love this tip so much. I'll stamp it on a total angle like this because Kathy's was a little bit straighter but I'm going to show you really how wonky you can get and how this trimmer totally fixes it. This is one of my favorite trimmers and I especially love it because of this. Someone the other day was struggling with lining things up and I told them just use that plastic guide. So if you go right along here and you line it up right with the edge of that guide so that every part of your sentiment touches that, that's how you know you're going to have a straight line. I'll do the same thing with the birthday part of the sentiment, but I wanna show you how to get like a little bit of a larger room, and that's to line it up on the inside of it like this. So instead of on the outside, look on the inside and line it up there. This is what Kathy did, and you get a little bit more room there. So besides that trimmer just being the best cutter, this also has that really great guide for you to line things up on. I haven't found a trimmer like it that I love, and it has been so easy, even when it gets so crooked like that with the stamping, to line things up and make sure that they're straight every single time. Three, use a cloth when stamping with a stamp positioner. 
this tip is kind of controversial because I don't love doing this, but I haven't really tried it out. I'm going to test it out with a couple different tools today and see if I love it as much as her, but I'm going to watch and see. I know a lot of people do this and have absolutely loved it, so let's check it out. Now, I love my Misty. My Misty tool has made stamping possible for me, right? You pick up your stamps, you ink them up with your choice of ink, and when you go to press down, here's my tip. Use a soft cloth to apply pressure to transfer the image. I don't know about you, but I don't like my fingers sticking to the acrylic of the door. Mine so stick every I time I do it. <laughs> that I use actually, it's a Swiffer cloth. So not only can I smoothly stamp, I can clean up with it as well. That's a win-win. That's an amazing tip too, to take those Swiffer cloths and clean it all up. I was gonna share that in today's video, but those are all packed away, so I won't be able to have those. But I'm gonna test out a couple tools. This is one that my audience member made me. I know you could use dry erase board markers or just a simple cloth like she was talking about. And I'm gonna test this out to see if it's something that I like. I always never really wanted an extra tool on my desk to have to look for, but I honestly realized I use my cloth all the time for inking. So this is gonna be helpful to just kind of press around because my fingers definitely do get kind of stuck on this. Um, they're, they're pretty dry. And then let's go in with my archival ink and ink this up so we can stamp it down. My biggest worry was that I was never going to be able to like give it even enough pressure. But let's go in and try this out and just give the rag the pressure and kind of swirl it around a little bit. I've got to say it definitely is easier to just give like a good pressure to everywhere and let's see if it stamped. Wow. Okay, it stamped really nicely. I feel like I actually did have a lot of control over how much pressure I put down there. Now, I also wanted to show that people have been using dry erase board erasers, and that seems to work really well since it has a soft surface. And one of my viewers, Trudy, actually made this just using some wood from the hardware store and then attaching a little piece of felt on the bottom so it's just like the same concept of a dry erase eraser. All right, so let's go in and ink this up again, and let's see if this gives me better control because you have something easier to grip onto. So maybe if you have wrist issues, this might be a good way for you to easily be able to press down, give it really good pressure, and I can definitely like apply a lot of pressure to that. And that gives you a nice smooth look too. So it's almost like, I've seen those people on Instagram that do like the paintings where they take that big thing and make sure that they've got a good stamped image of their paint. And that's kind of what this reminds me of. You definitely can get more pressure than I expected out of this. So I would actually say this tip is a win. Good job, Kathy. I, you've switched me over to using a cloth on my Misty tool. We'll see if I keep it up in my videos and I remember to do it, but it definitely is a little bit easier. This might change your life. Forever. Okay, maybe not forever, but these five uh, tips... This is why I love Kathy too. She's got an amazing sense of humor and always makes me smile and laugh during the videos. So check them out. I know you guys are going to love them. One is to use a clothespin when you are heat embossing. I learned this fantastic tip from my friend Gina Kay and it keeps your fingers from getting hot while you are using the heat tool. I gotta say, I always burn my fingers, and I like never have learned from it to just like maybe use a clothespin or a piece of tweezers. Um, so this will come in handy, so and I'll test this out. No matter what size the cardstock is that you are embossing, but it gives you that clearance, so the fingers stay protected, the wood doesn't absorb the heat. Gina, you are a genius. And awesome. Let's get to testing this. All right, so I'm just stamping down my background using my Tree Farm background stamp, and now let's get into embossing this. So I'm just going to quickly throw over a layer of clear embossing. This is a good tip too, if you work fast enough with my ink, you know, put the embossing powder over right after you're done with the background. You can easily throw a layer of clear embossing over top and then get whatever color is underneath embossed. And now let's go in and use Kathy and Gina's tip of using the clothespin. I cannot tell you how many times I've burnt my hand especially doing a whole background like this, where you're trying to heat the edges and stuff like that, this comes into a great handy. So I'm just going to heat this up. Okay, so I've gotta say, I heated like right up to the edge of this and I didn't get burned, I didn't even have to worry about it, which is amazing, and because it's wood, like Kathy says, it's not gonna conduct heat like a tweezers would. So if you use your metal tweezers, you're definitely gonna get a lot hotter and maybe even burn yourself, whereas with this, I didn't even have to worry about going too close to it and it worked perfectly. Three, de-hair your die cuts. Well, let me this is a must, because whenever I die cut, I always have those little tiny like hairs of, she'll explain it, but little, little hairs of paper, and this is super helpful. Explain this one. You know how you run your 
intricate die through the die cut machine. And if you take a close look at it, there are always these little paper, well, I call them hairs. I take purple tape, put it on my fingers, and just start rolling it over the die cut. I usually hold the die cut down, especially if it's a delicate die cut, because you don't want to bend it and get it all mucked up that way. But what will happen is you're going to see so much paper paper hairs, if you will, come off the die cut. So and that is such an awesome tip. I've done it before with like a lint roller and that's ripped my cardstock. So the tip of using purple tape or mint tape to pull up where it's meant to be less sticky is going to get those off without ripping your cardstock in the process. So amazing tip, Kathy. This one's one of my favorites just because I, those things bug me so much, especially when you're layering um, like stacked sentiments and things like that. And you want to make sure they're super clean. All right, guys, this was so much fun to react to, recreate, and share my opinions on Kathy Zilski's favorite card making life hacks. If you guys enjoyed this and want to see more with other people, be sure to leave a comment down below who you want me to react to their videos next. And also be sure to show Kathy lots of love. She has an amazing YouTube channel. And again, I'll link it down below as well so you can check it out. So much personality always makes me laugh and her designs are stunning. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe down below to never miss another card making video like this one from me. And also I have a new phone number as well. So if you text this, you'll get sales, deals, and chat with me one-on-one -on -one if you have any questions. All right, guys, without further ado, I'll talk to you guys very, very soon in another card making video. Have a wonderful day. Bye.